Avengers Endgame is the three-hour epic conclusion to this three-phase, 21-movie run of the MCU. Sound complicated? The writers thought so too. Let's get our stones off and go deep inside Avengers. There are two camps of people that will be going to Endgame. Those that have seen all 21 movies leading up to this 22nd and can't wait to watch their heroes again on the big screen. Some, presumably for the last time. The latter group is definitely doing themselves a disservice by not seeing those previous entries. I've seen some one-off reviews here and there that say Endgame works as a standalone film. Okay, sure. I guess it does in the same way that hole number 18 on the golf course works as a standalone hole. But come on, let's be honest, it's part of a bigger game. I normally would list off the primary characters in a movie, but the potpourri of talent on display is rivaled by none. That's not to say all these characters get equal moments to shine, but the Russo brothers do an incredible job giving intimate moments for almost everyone we've seen in past outings. Endgame, of course, is the direct follow-up to Infinity War, and the consequences of the Avengers' failure is on the screen in all its horrific glory. We spend a lot of quality time with the Avengers' main cast, the OG crew here. This is very much a Tony Stark picture, a Thor Odinson picture, Steve Rogers picture, everyone that was in that trust circle in the first Joss Whedon Avengers film. This is their movie. The biggest acting surprise for me came from Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. It's pretty fair to say, I think, that in past films she wasn't given the most riveting material to work with. We didn't expect much from this character outside of looking over the shoulder with a pouty face, get a nice tasteful ass shot, maybe she flips the hair back, we get a cleave shot. Here though, I was amazed. The Scarlett proves why she's one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood today. She gets a chance to shine. She gets a chance to earn that paycheck. Downey's character has grown the most over the saga's run, and he continues to play this part as effortlessly as Stark himself does when figuring out a solution to a problem. Paul, I am de-aging in real time Rudd, is such a joy to watch. I was very happy to see him again, and not just there to deliver well-timed jokes. He has skin in the game along with the rest of humanity, and it shows through. We also have the Avengers' favorite punchline, Hawkeye. America's Everyman. Jeremy Renner has gone from one of the most eye-rolling characters in early films to one of the most sympathetic, relatable ones. And this time he goes full-blown John Wick. He's got a score to settle and he doesn't care who gets in his way. Unfortunately, we don't have the slick moves John Wick does. Uh, that, that's a problem with the action all around for me, but I'll get more into that later. Karen Gillan continues to impress as Nebula alongside everyone's favorite trash panda, Rocket. Chris Evans as Captain America, aka America's Ass, is another guy that really found his way in this franchise. And it's mainly due to Evans' clear love for the hero showing through in his performance. Thor, for me, and along with many others, stole the show in Infinity War. And in Endgame, it's Captain's show. Now, before I go any further, these are all subjective opinions I have about some of the ways they treated characters. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty. It would be very surface level. You're not even going to know what I'm talking about if you haven't seen the film. And that's intentional. I don't want to spoil anything. Here's a vague and simple fact for you friends. I didn't like the treatment of Thor this time around. He steals the show, but in an entirely different way, and it wasn't what I liked. Maybe for a scene or two, as a gag, but this thing overstays its welcome. And the Hulk? Whew. Uh, I, I mean, I, it's, it's honestly bonkers. I don't even know what to say about it. Let's just say that that, 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 that feared uh, Hulk from the last film in Infinity War comes out of his shell, but not in the way I expected. For those of you that were excited about Captain Marvel showing up, why? You may be bummed to hear she only has about 10 or 15 minutes of screen time, and her presence here did nothing but solidify my previous thoughts on her. She sucks. She's a poorly written character that was thrown in as a Hail Mary at the last second for, I guess, to just spin off more properties. It's a shame. She's a shallow husk of a superhero. Thankfully, we only have to deal with a few scenes and a really bad haircut for a limited time. Thanos is back, and I still don't know how to pronounce his name. Is it Thanos or Thanos? I'm just gonna keep switching it and hope that everyone notices. He has a smaller role this time around. And that's a shame, because Josh Brolin is awesome at the character, and he was a highlight for me last time. I understand why this is very much focused on Tony and the gang, where the last one was very much his film, but uh, I would have liked a little bit more Thanos in my life. I needed it. I wanted it. Instead, he comes off more like, you know, past villains, what we expect from this series, where they're just in the background. I barely scratched the surface as far as the characters go, but I'm going to move things along. I could do this all day. Here's my quick plot summary. Thanos won. The Avengers are justifiably pissed. 
want revenge. Infinity War moved at a pretty much breakneck pace from beginning to end. There was little room to take a breath. The heroes and the audience are in a per the heroes and the audience are in a perpetual state of panic, and rightfully so. We're talking about half of the universe being wiped out. Now that the deed is done, we get some very much needed time to take a beat, assess the situation with the team, form a plan, and go get that son of a bitch. There was not a single moment in this picture where I wanted to leave for the bathroom during the three hour long run. Long movies can be punishing if done wrong. If done right, can't be too long. If you were emotionally drained from Infinity War, the Russos may have heard you. Endgame is oddly funny. Borderline a comedy at times. It was definitely not what I expected, which leads me to the biggest issue with the flick. It's a tonal and narrative mess. A glorious mess, but a mess nonetheless. It sounded like a Dr. Seuss rhyme. I just really thought we were at a place where the scope and magnitude of the situation was so heavy that the storylines might match that a tad more. As it stands, there are good chunks of time dedicated to sight gags, pandering team-ups, and some very puzzling decisions by the leadership. It's one of those things where if you even thought about the plot for more than half a second, your brain might explode. Yet, none of the many plot holes or consistencies matter. This is the culmination of a decade-spanning experiment that changed the game. A game that no other studio has managed to replicate. The audience is here for the heroes on the screen and the relationships they've forged. There are plenty of surprises. There are plenty of smaller, touching moments. The action is there, we have a big battle, albeit it's a bit stale this time around, outside of one or two truly remarkable segments. I honestly didn't notice any big musical cues, outside the staple Avengers theme song, which I think was overdone in both parts. I'm sure I'm in the minority on this, it happens from time to time, but I prefer Infinity War to Endgame, mainly because I loved the breakneck speed and intensity of it all. Plus, it, it just slowly builds, it ratches it up, uh, from beginning to end to that final battle, and, and it leaves you just heart-wrenched, just broken, like the team. Endgame is wildly successful when it's not trying to build up its brand or showcase phase four potential spin-offs. It's also a movie I will watch and enjoy many times over. A movie that not only pays tribute to the films before it, but even reflects, and in cases, enhances some of the worst installments. It makes me want to start from the beginning and do it all over again. But first, I'm gonna go to Endgame one more time. It's absolutely worth it. <laughs>